Hi, I'm Bill Hicks, Counselor at Edina High School, and on behalf of the entire counseling department, I'd like to welcome you to one of the videos in regards to post-secondary planning. Um, and obviously, as you can see by the screen, today's topic is the United States Military Academies, also known as the Service Academies. This presentation, along with the other ones that we have in our video, are for your viewing, um, students and parents alike at any time. Hopefully that you take advantage of these and that they're informative um, and that they will give you a better understanding of the opportunities that uh, students at Edina and elsewhere have alike um, in regards to planning beyond Edina High School. With that being said, uh, the topic today of the U.S. Military Academies, I'll go through and, and talk a little bit about um, the different areas of the militaries, talk a little bit about giving a brief description, um, what the service academies are looking for in a candidate, um, specifically what is the life like as a candidate or like as, as a cadet or midshipman, uh, what the process is in order to apply to a military academy or service academy, and lastly, is it right for you? Um, with that being said, as you can see, there are five different U.S. military academies spread across the United States. They include West Point, which is the United States Military Academy, um, also part of the Army. The Naval Academy from the branch of service known as obviously the Navy, and that is in Annapolis, Maryland. The Air Force Academy. Um, is out in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The Coast Guard Academy is in New London, Connecticut. And lastly, the Merchant Marines, which is in Kings Point, New York. Now, each one is very unique. They have some similarities and yet are very different in regards to their uh, position and process um, in regards to um, the background that they're looking for and so forth. So um, a little bit about each one of the different military academies. First and foremost, there are, as I mentioned before, they represent four of the different branches of military. The Merchant Marines is a little bit different than West Point, the Navy, the Air Force, um, and the Coast Guard because all four of those Students that attend, or cadets, uh, midshipmen as they're known, um, are on active duty. Merchant Marines are only active duty if in the case of war that they are called up. So they are a little bit unique and different than the other military academies. Um, as I mentioned before, if you hear people call them midshipmen, or cadets, they are different parts of their branches of the, uh, the academy. West Point, they are known as cadets. Um, the Naval Academy and the Merchant Marines are known as midshipmen, and Air Force Academy are also known as cadets. Um, so <clears throat> what are the military academies looking for in a candidate? Um, they are much different than your typical um, post-secondary institution across the United States and the fact that they do have specific criteria that they're looking for, but the process itself is somewhat different and I'll go into that in a little while. But if you are interested in the military academies, first and foremost, they're looking at strong students. Um, the academic performance on a typical 4.0 GPA, they're looking at students that have performed exceedingly well in the five main areas of their academics, English, math, science, social studies, world language, and so forth. Um, a 3.5 GPA is not always but most often than not considered to be minimum criteria for students that are looking at one of the service academies. Now, the next step, uh, the standardized test score is a little bit different because that we are in different times today than what we have been in the past, but the military academies still are requesting that they would like to see a standardized test score. 
the ACT test score is on a 36 point scale, a one to 36 point scale, the highest being 36. They're looking at the average ACT score of the majority of students having a 30 or higher. Now, does that mean that you have to have a 30 or higher? No. I have had students that I've uh, worked with that have had lower ACT scores than here the median average of a 30 on the ACT or a 1400 on the SAT. Um, but in most cases that they are looking at extremely strong test takers um, in regards to standardized tests. So I think that you would probably say that the 30 on an ACT or higher and a 1400 on the SAT is kind of a benchmark for students if you're looking at a military academy. Um, but it doesn't mean that if you fall below that, you'll never get in. So use that kind of as a midpoint or kind of a benchmark to uh, review over standardized test scores. They're also looking at extracurricular activities and probably I would say that most often than not, the biggest key here is in extracurriculars is not so much the quantity of extracurriculars that students are involved in, but more so the quality. Um, students that attend the service academy are basically required to be involved in some type of athletic event continuously over their four years of service. So they are looking at students that are actively involved in school and they also highlight athletics as a key. So, but does it mean that you have to be a varsity athlete to be admissed uh, at one of the service institutions? No, but it is something that they think is extremely important because that it is part of physical activity is a huge part of being a member of the service academy, being a cadet or a midshipman, staying in shape. Um, and so that athletic activity does provide that for their students. And so that that's something that they're looking for in their candidates. The other thing that they're looking for is leadership and community involvement. What I mean by leadership would be examples would be if you are a member of an athletic team, if you've been named as a leader, such as a captain, an assistant captain, um, a group leader, a facilitator, if you're somebody that organized um, and uh, started a, a, a group or started a uh, involvement in one capacity or another, they're looking at that as something that is extremely important um, moving forward. Any type of community involvement, if you are volunteering, if you're working, um, every circumstance is a little bit different, but they do want to see somebody that is active, willing to get involved, working with uh, their fellow students, being a part of society, um, they'd much rather see involvement than they would or a lack of. The other parts and pieces of the uh, admission criteria is a letter of recommendation. They're looking specifically for letters of recommendation from science and math teachers. Um, most often than not, they're not looking for somebody that, uh, for instance, um, a music teacher, a, a world language teacher. Um, they're looking at the core curriculum areas specifically of science and math because that's what you're going to be doing over the course of the next four years is focusing in on those uh, academic areas. And the last thing that they're looking for under their admission criteria is their your nomination. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later on in regards to what you should be doing as a student over the course of the four years of high school. So those are the key admission criteria. I don't think that they look at one more than the other. They're looking at a complete and total student, somebody that can involve themselves with others, high strong academics in the areas of math science, involved outside of school, inside of school, being an athlete and having strong um, academic standards. So those are all things that they're looking for um, as somebody that they would like to continue to pursue in part of the academies. So what to expect as a student? 
um, when you go to the academies and, and what is different about a service academy compared to a typical four-year college? Well, in many cases, first and foremost, that uh, prior to an enrollment, you are going to be spending your summer previous or prior to your um, service academy in boot camp. You'll be leaving most often than not in the months of June before school starts, and you'll be doing uh, a, roughly eight weeks of uh, boot camp prior to um, classroom work. So you'll be leaving before most any other seniors that have graduated. You'll have maybe a time of a, a week to two weeks off after graduation, and then you'll be sent off to the military academy to do your eight weeks of boot camp prior to school starting. That's just the beginning. Um, as I mentioned before, what's unique about the military academies is that it's a four-year experience, um, but it is different than having a typical four-year college experience. One of the differences is the types of degrees that students will be looking at. Most often than not, students have to be strong in science and math because that is the focus of the academies themselves. Most students will do, uh, graduate with a Bachelor of Science degree. There are some institutions where that they offer business degrees, but the focus for, and you'll see that most often than not, students will be taking a heavy, heavy emphasis in the math areas and in the science areas. Computer science, business courses can be offered, but most often than not, you're gonna be obtaining a degree in the Bachelor of Science areas. Another thing that's what's unique about the military academies is once that you graduate after four years, you are a commissioned officer upon graduation. What does that mean? It means that you will be working with others, uncommissioned st uh, students that uh, um, you have service to do beyond your four years of schooling. Obviously that you are giving back to your school um, for receiving an education basically, because you will be um, getting scholarship those four years of school. So school basically at the, at the service academies is free, but in return, you are obligated to give five years beyond your four years of the, the, the service academy um, afterwards into the service as being a commissioned officer and serving as an officer in that branch of the military. So there's a commitment before school, there's a commitment after school, and there's obviously a commitment during school, which is somewhat unique in comparison to a typical four-year undergraduate education. So you have to be willing to commit um, multiple years to the service um, when you sign off on being a cadet or a midshipman, which is very unique. So as a student, either at Edina High School or at any, at, at any high school, what are the things that you need to do and when should you be doing them? Well, I guess the key for me as a counselor when working with students um, during their high school years, what I would tell them is that the earlier that they know, the better off that they're going to be. What do I mean by that? Start early. If you're a freshman, if you're a sophomore, the most important thing for you to be doing is making sure you're taking the appropriate classes, college prep classes, you're taking a high level of math course, you're taking this, an extreme uh, course in regards to your sciences, and we'll continue that over the next four years. That is something that all of the branches of the military are going to look at, the strength of a student's schedule. Do they have the proper uh, academic background in order to be successful? So if you are interested during your freshman and sophomore years, the biggest thing is to make sure you're taking the appropriate classes. Secondly, in those classes that you're doing 
extremely well. They're looking at students again, as I mentioned before previously, when I said the criteria was an academic GPA of 3.5 or higher, you have to get A's and B's in your classes. If you're getting average grades or below average grades, that's the first indicator that many of these schools will say they can't cut it. Unfortunately, it's a high level of academic uh, rigor, and that's what they expect students to have had and be ready to continue to take during those four years. I guess I would also say when you reach your junior year, you better have a good understanding that it is one of the options that you are interested in looking at. And the first and foremost thing that you need to do is to express or to share that with your counselor and your teachers as well. One of the first things that you'll need to do outside of school is to go online and find a candidate questionnaire or a pre-candidate questionnaire, fill that out and send that in. That leads to the next step of your candidacy. And I guess what I would say candidacy is whether or not that you have the qualifications to be successful and be able to be a part of a military academy. So there are steps to be and to be taken and they need to be followed. The other thing that you would have to do, obviously, is to talk and, and, and notify your counselor that you are interested because they can get in touch with the proper people if you haven't done so already. Why you should talk to your counselor is because that they need not only to guide you in this process, but more importantly, to get you in touch with the right people. There is a liaison officer for Edina High School with the military academies. We have a liaison officer that is willing and able and wanting to be able to help you to find the right people, to know, to do what the right thing is and to take place um, over the course of your years. I think one of the biggest things that students need to know and to be aware of is that there are deadlines that are different than that of the typical high school student applying to college. You need to meet those deadlines. If you don't, unfortunately, your application or your candidacy will not be moving forward and thus you won't have that opportunity. There still are ways in which that you could get to a military academy, but unfortunately the direct way in which that most of the students do go, go through it would not take place because you haven't fulfilled the deadlines so what is it in regards to a nom nomination some of the things that they're going to ask you why would you want to attend academy what's your reasoning behind wanting to spend the next nine plus years of your life and in many cases it's more than nine years a majority of officers who attend the military academies make this as a living and continue on beyond those nine years and in some capacity work with other students and other institutions within the military. So the question here is as a 16, 17 year old student, you've gotta be asking yourself, I'm making a huge commitment, a commitment not only for the next four years of my life, but the next five beyond those four and in many cases, am I willing to commit beyond that? So the first question that you have to ask yourself is, why do I want to attend an academy? If I know that it's different, if that those students that attend there, and roughly at the present time, 75% of the academies are made up of men, the other 25% are obviously made up of women, but is that what I want to be doing, not only for the next nine years of my life, but potentially beyond that? Some other questions that you might ask yourself is, how do I serve presently? And am I willing to serve others beyond this? Service is what underlines the uniqueness towards the military. You are not serving yourself as much as you are serving others. Am I willing to be able to give myself up over this time period and still keep my sanity as well as serving others? Another question you have to ask yourself is, am I a leader presently? If I'm not, what can I do to become a leader? How do I become a leader? And can that leadership sustain and continue, not just now, but in the future? 
And then lastly, one of the other questions that we have, we have students ask, because it is part of the pre-candidate questionnaire and the candidate questionnaire, why do I deserve a nomination? What is it that I have that I believe has to be and can be successful at a military institution? So summing up, what are the next steps? First and foremost, you have to do some self-reflection. Secondly, once you've done that and say to yourself, if this is something that you want to pursue, you need to be able to make the next step and notify some very significant and important people in your life. First and foremost, your high school counselor. You need to set up a time to meet with them and let them know that you have a potential interest in a military academy. Once that happens, if you haven't done so, you're gonna be able to need to reach out to talk to a liaison officer and other adults out there to be able to get you to where you want to go. <clears throat> so summarizing, the biggest question I think that those bring forth is, is this right for you? The military academies are unique. They're different than any experience that a post-secondary planning part is. It's not a four-year college. It is an education in the areas of self-reflection. Who am I? Where am I? And where would I like to go? The Military Academy, I've had the experience of attending um, and, and visiting a couple of them. They are very unique places. They're wonderful institutions, and again, they serve this country well, and they serve a purpose. What you have to do is to look at yourself. If you are a student that is considering the service academy or the military academies, is it right for me? Because that unlike a college where that you say, well, if it doesn't work, I can always transfer. It is a unique situation where that once you attend, you are committing yourself for not just one year, two years, three years, but not only the four year academic piece in the undergraduate experience at each one of these military academies, but five years beyond that serving your country. The students that attend these institutions, for the most part, those that continue, will tell you it's the greatest thing that they've ever experienced, obviously, but then there are some students that will do some questioning and say, was this right for me? It's better to have those questions before than during or after. But I think that what you need to do if you are a student thinking about the military academy, you need to talk to as many people as possible. You need to talk this over with your parents, you need to talk this over with your counselor. You need to get a hold of a liaison officer who can then give you firsthand experience because most often than not, those liaison officers have probably attended a military institution so they can give you a firsthand experience and maybe do some self-reflecting. So the next step in this whole process is, as I mentioned before, do some self-reflecting, talk it over with the adults in your life that are significant, and if you are interested, please make sure you set up an appointment to talk to your counselor as soon as possible and get them involved in your post-secondary planning. On behalf of the entire counseling department, I guess I would like to say thank you for viewing this. And if you have any questions, please reach out to your high school counselor. Thanks and have a great day.